Howdy! This is part six of my dynamo build. Be sure and watch the other ones if you haven't seen them. And today is the day of reckoning to see if this uh, little beauty works. And just a drop of oil on each bearing. And I think I'll try running it here with the Rayovax. That's three volts is what we got. And before I start it, I have two little magnets on each side. They're 5 sixteenths in diameter. Those are still subject to a revision or replacement or increase in size or number or whatever I feel like. Now a two-pole motor, remember, is not self-starting. I know I'm building a dynamo, but remember, dynamos usually are reversible so that they can run on, uh, as a motor or as a generator. And you can see the little brushes transferring the 3 volt the current into the armature. Runs quite nice, I must confess. One other improvement I'm going to make here in a few minutes is I'm going to take the armature out and mill just a tiny flat spot for the pulley. Otherwise, sometimes the set screw, the grub screw for you guys in the UK, galls the shaft. Then you can't get the pulley off. And of course, it's going to run in the other direction when I reverse the polarity. If you have young boys in the house, oh, it could be young girls too, for that matter. Even though this is, this is ancient technology, it's basic electricity, so have them take a look at what's inside of a motor. Normally, any kind of given motor, and there's hundreds of them around every house, and even in your computers, but you can't see any of the motors, or if you could see the motors, it is not self-evident of uh, what is making them run, but this is an open stator type, and it's in reverse now. Now let's uh, perform this experiment with it's speeding up. As a matter of fact, it pulled the uh, magnets out of the other end, and I. So it would work with more powerful magnets. The problem is that you have to start it because there's quite a strong attraction uh, for the uh, armature poles to the magnets and you have to spin it to get it started. Okay, the proof is in the pudding here and it does run. So now let me try it as a dynamo. This is a temporary setup just to uh, test run it. The dynamo clamp to the bench. Now this belt is way too long and these are uh, spring belts or springs that came out of large oil seals that a man gave me several of these and did you ever see the way these are constructed? In fact there's a splice and you can unscrew one or unscrew them rather and then they will screw back together and I've already determined on the other one where I want to cut it off and just simply cut it off with the uh, uh, dikes as such. Screw it back together and I have an endless belt now hopefully of about the right length. How nice is that? Now it's belted up with that nice short belt to that vertical double acting steam engine. Notice the little LEDs right here.
Ah, the sweet smell of success. Makes me very happy. I would have hated to spend five days on this and then not have it work and have to trash all of this video. It's just my preference, but I far prefer an analog type meter for checking this, and I got it set on DC, oh, six volts or whatever the scale is. Let's see what we get. Right at about two and a half volts. Let me vary the RPM just a little bit. little fluctuation there, but not much. So it's about two and a half volts, and I believe the LEDs require about one and a half to two and a half volts. I'm not exactly sure I've forgotten. Light emitting diode. What do you think? And I have an entire drawer of uh, multimeters, digital, and uh, amprobe type, all the different brands, craftsmen, lest you think I'd be deprived. Now this is what I would like to do to complete the model. I would like to make this little lamp post here, only it'll have an LED in it. And I think that's really an acute affair. You know, Tom Jensen of Jensen uh, Steam Engines came up with this years ago. 1948, I guess, was, and is still available. But it is now $113. There it is on, uh, on the internet. However, I'm greatly saddened to see that they use a stamped steel base now rather than the beautiful cast iron base, but I guess times have changed, and I haven't. But for $113, you can have that, and you know what? I think that's actually a bargain because I've spent 113 hours on this model. Well, not that many, but plenty of hours. So if you want one, there you go. And you know, I like the idea here of they have a three step pulley so you can get different uh, ratios, different speeds. So on with the build. I really wanted to use steel tubing, not brass or copper, which is way too soft. So I can't. Trying to think of where can I get some steel tubing, so I went on down to O'Reilly's and bought this piece of 3 16 uh, brake line. Well, that was six or seven dollars, and uh, just throw the fittings away. You know, now I'm to the point in my life at 71 years old that I throw things away. I, I'm not going to mess around saving those, thinking that I'm going to use them because I won't. Now, as far as a lampshade, I had this in a junk drawer. I'm just telling you about throwing away junk and I found something that I could use in my junk drawer. So I contradicted myself, but my prerogative. And I also thought, well, I could use a thimble, a woman's sewing thimble. Well, my wife hasn't sewed in 40 years, so I, I can't s steal that out of her notions box because she doesn't have an notions box anymore. But that might work as, as a shade. And uh, let's give a I've tried bending this and I know it should bend nicely because the whole idea with brake tubing is that it has to be uh, bent. Also I found out at O'Reilly's that you can buy this in a roll of 50 feet or so all coiled up. I had no idea. I thought you had to buy straight pieces. You learn something every day. And now using my KD bender which I don't think I've ever used and it'll be the smallest groove it's groovy. There will of course be some waste stock here but I don't care because I got three feet of it. Is 
that something like that? Just a little more. You know what? Cutting this tubing off with a tubing cutter is a bit of a failure because it virtually closes up the end and I am going to thread wire through there so I'm better off using my little hobby fine tooth uh, hacksaw to cut it off the length there. I must say I'm progressing nicely here and I think you can see now why I didn't want to use copper for the tubing because it's just hard to, to keep it straight. It's just as soft and limber as can be so that's why I chose the steel and this is cut to length now and I cleaned the ends a little bit because I plan on using a good old Loctite to hold the shade on and that was brass when I went to drill. I was shocked. I thought it was brass plated which means it must have been around my shop for a long time if it was a solid brass. I made this little base and that also will be held on with an anaerobic and that's turned to 3 16 eighth inch hole and I will drill a quarter inch make that quarter inch I will drill and ream a quarter inch hole and that is the base as far as the wire is concerned this is telephone wire which I have 500 feet and that's just the right gauge whatever it is to do the job and I'll run the wires underneath and up into the light post. I'm progressing nicely and I'm almost ready to Loctite this in place but I'm not going to do that yet but you can see that the wires run through the bottom and will run across and one will come up through this little hole and one through this little hole near the screws here on the brush holder. So that's an easy plumbing job here. But uh, the, the next thing I need to do is to decide on the LEDs. Now these LEDs came out of a cheap flashlight, you know, and they're so plentiful now. And it's easy to unsolder them and take them off and then they look something, well, something, they look exactly like that. But they are very tiny, hard to handle and hard to solder. So what I did here is I, I cut these off in clusters off of this little circuit board and uh, I'm going to put either two or three up here into the shade. I had to do a bit of rather delicate soldering onto the back of these LEDs to connect uh, some of the uh, diodes with the others. But now I have a little cluster that is ready to mount into the lamp post. I need some small brass or copper washers to fit onto these uh, attachment screws here for the brushes. So uh, instead of going down to the hardware store where it costs a dime for a little washer, it in fact is cheaper to take a penny and make your washers. So I punched out some pennies, first with a large punch, then with a small punch and ended up with these little washers. But of course they aren't copper, they aren't brass, they're zinc that is copper plated. But I also made some up just out of a sheet brass, brass, like that. And the whole procedure here is to punch with a large punch, whatever size you need for the OD. That's my big Whitney punch. like so and then take one of your small Whitney punches and in this case it's uh, just a little bit bigger than one eighth and I repunch them and they'll look like this I made two different sizes and then lay them on the anvil and flatten them there's just a little bit of distortion don't try to drill them. It's quite a nightmare to, to hang on to something like that and drill. So that's how you make your washers without a trip in the snow to the hardware store. Well sure, now that I've made little uh, 
washers I find that I have a complete selection of these and I've had them probably for 20 years and look at the prices they call them burrs here 13 cents each and there's three different sizes they are to be used of course in conjunction with rivets but uh, here are several of them but they're copper not brass and the smallest one probably is still just a little bit too small or too large to use this is about the size I want but what good is it to have this stuff if I don't know that I have it or I can't find it I guess is my point I'm making some progress here as I showed you before that was a real good fit in there for these three LEDs so I, I tapped it in there and then I put some clear epoxy in there so that's not going anywhere and finally I am ready to thread this into the base decide how I want to locate that and then I'll put some Loctite on this well that's just about enough fun for the day this concludes part six of the dynamo build stay tuned and watch me tomorrow as I try to do the final touches here get this thing running and possibly mounted on a board so that it's operational this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and I'll see you in my next video